If you live in the Northern Hemisphere like I do, winter is most definitely coming. And if you've got a home battery either in the garage, the loft or installed outside, the cold temperatures will almost certainly affect its performance. Lithium batteries just don't like the cold. Stay with me in this video and I'll explain why that is and also what you can do about it. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. If you're thinking about getting a home battery, where you install it has implications on how that battery will perform during the colder times of the year. Where are home batteries typically installed then? If you have a garage, this can be a good place to install your battery. Garages attached to the house often stay a bit warmer due to the heat transfer from the main living areas. However, as they are not as well insulated as the rest of the home, in winter you could expect temperatures dropping to around 5 degrees centigrade. Detached garages, on the other hand, can get quite cold in the winter, often close to outside temperatures, which could be below freezing during the colder spells. Many homes have sufficient space in the loft to house a battery, but lofts get very cold in winter, especially at night, often only a few degrees warmer than the outside temperature, which again might be below freezing. Consideration, of course, should be made for the limited access, poor ventilation and a potential fire hazard. Another option is to install the battery outside, either on an external wall to the home or in an outbuilding of some kind. Temperatures in an outbuilding will be similar to that of an external garage, but on an external wall it is directly exposed to the outside temperatures and weather conditions, wind, frost and snow. So what happens to batteries at low temperatures? Well, there are two main effects, a decrease in battery capacity and a reduction in the charging rate. Thankfully, these efforts are reversible when the temperature climbs again. But with prolonged exposure at low temperatures, you can expect faster battery degradation and a higher risk of permanent capacity loss. So why is this? To answer that question, we need to understand a little bit more about how lithium ion batteries operate. A lithium ion battery comprises the following main parts. A cathode, which is essentially a sheet of aluminium foil with a lithium compound stuck to it. For example, lithium iron phosphate if the battery is an LFP battery. An anode, which essentially is a copper sheet with graphite coated on it. And in between the two is a thin plastic separator. And then the entire structure is filled with a liquid electrolyte. When the battery is being charged, the cathode releases lithium ions which migrate towards the anode. For each lithium ion released, an electron is also released. Now unlike the lithium ion, the electron cannot pass through the separator, so it takes a different route, flowing around the charging circuit and into the anode, where it recombines with the lithium ion to join the graphite structure in a process known as intercalating. This process continues until the battery is charged to capacity. And the discharging process is the opposite in that the lithium ions are released from the graphite and migrate back to the cathode. The released electrons travel back round the electrical circuit, this time powering home appliances, before arriving at the cathode, recombining with the lithium ions again. Now the problem with operating a lithium ion battery at cold temperatures is that the electrolyte becomes more viscous and it makes it harder for the lithium ions to move around. Additionally, the electrical conductivity of the cathode decreases, which reduces the overall capacity and efficiency of the battery. And on the anode side, the intercalation of lithium ions into the graphite structure also becomes less efficient. And the lower the temperature, the greater the risk of what is called lithium plating. This is where the lithium ions fail to intercalate and instead plate on the anode surface as metallic lithium. And this reduces the battery's overall capacity because the plated lithium is no longer available for the battery's normal charge and discharge cycles. Worse still, the metallic lithium is reactive and this can increase the risk of short circuits within the battery, leading to overheating or thermal runaway. Now the effect of cold temperatures on lithium batteries varies depending on the actual chemistry used, for example LFP or NMC chemistry. You might remember we covered these chemistries in this video I made recently, on how to choose the ideal battery. In that video, I made a comparison between NMC and LFP chemistries across five different areas. I could have added an extra area on cold temperatures, so let's see how that looks in more detail now. Starting with temperature sensitivity, 
LFP batteries are generally less sensitive to cold temperatures compared to NMC and that allows them to operate more effectively. Then, capacity retention. All batteries suffer from capacity reduction in cold conditions, but NMC batteries experienced a more pronounced drop in capacity when the temperature decreases. Charging performance. NMC batteries are more susceptible to slower charging rates at lower temperatures than LFP batteries. Degradation and longevity. Frequent exposure to cold temperatures can accelerate degradation in both NMC and LFP batteries, but the effects are generally less with LFP, contributing to a longer overall lifespan. Safety and stability. LFP batteries are already known for their thermal stability and safety, but NMC batteries typically require more robust management systems to maintain safety at temperature extremes. And finally, operational range. LFP batteries typically have a wider operational temperature range, meaning that they can function more effectively in cold temperatures before their performance starts to degrade significantly. So as you can see, in colder temperatures, LFP batteries tend to perform better than NMC batteries. My own installation includes two LFP batteries from Give Energy. These batteries are 9.5 kilowatt hours each, and you can see them here installed in my garage. I recently got in contact with Greg Stewart as he has a lot of expertise in battery technology, particularly around Give Energy batteries. I wanted to ask him what the effects of cold temperatures are likely to be on my own batteries. Here's what he said. The standard test conditions for a battery are managed at 25 degrees centigrade. And this is what the battery capacity is measured at, and capacity varies with temperature. If the battery cell temperature falls to 10 degrees, then the capacity of the battery drops by around 5%, and the charging rate of the battery drops too. And depending on your battery capacity, that rate drop could be quite large. If the battery cell temperature continues to drop, this time down to 0 degrees, the capacity of the battery drops by around 10%. But more than that, the battery management system, or BMS, that controls the battery will stop charging. And this is to protect the battery from damage. Remember the lithium plating issue we talked about earlier. And if the temperature of the cells is further reduced to minus 10 degrees, the battery management system will also stop discharging, again to protect the battery. You don't really want to go below that if you can avoid it, in case you permanently degrade the battery's capacity and also its ability to operate efficiently. OK, so I think we're getting the message that lithium batteries and the cold don't really get on well together. But we've seen that the battery management system is able to curtail charging and discharging in line with lower temperatures to protect the battery from damage. And some batteries have a built-in thermal management capability. The Tesla Powerwall 2 is a great example. It has both heating and cooling, which help maintain an optimal operating temperature for the cells. And of course, such capability negates all the negative effects of the cold at the expense of a little power consumption to power the heater. If your battery doesn't have such a capability and it's installed in the loft or garage, what could we do ourselves to help with thermal management? Well, you could certainly set up your own heater next to your battery, controlled by some home assistance software. But one of the easiest things you can do is just keep using it. You see, when you charge your battery, some of the energy you put in, maybe 10% or more, is lost to heat. But that heat plays a crucial role in colder conditions, as it is keeping the battery cells warmer than they would be otherwise. Now, where it gets interesting is that many energy providers around the world are now offering tariffs with lower off-peak rates, typically in the early hours of the morning. And this timing often aligns perfectly with when our batteries face the coldest temperatures of the day. And so that presents an ideal opportunity to charge our batteries with these off-peak hours, keeping them warm and then using that energy later in the day to save you money when it would be more expensive to buy. And if your tariff also has a reasonable export rate, I think it always makes sense to do this, even if you have solar panels and it's going to be sunny the next day. See my video here for more details on why that is. But even if you're not in favour of doing that, or you're not on a tariff with a cheap rate, you could still charge your battery overnight, but at a very low charge rate in the settings. That way you're only charging a small amount and it's not costing you much. But that charging is providing sufficient heat to keep your battery cells warmer than they would be for an extended number of hours. All that said, Greg reminded me that it's worth keeping an eye on the battery state of charge during the day. 
Because if your battery becomes empty by midday, say, and therefore idle up till the start of the off-peak period, you might still have some issues. If your battery is in the loft, there is one other trick you can do, and that is to remove any loft insulation that might be present underneath the battery. That way some of the heat from the home will rise naturally and help maintain a warmer environment for your battery. But what if your battery is installed in an outside wall? Is there anything that you can do here to help with thermal management? Well, I've heard people suggest you can wrap your battery with a thermal jacket, like the kind you get for insulating hot water tanks. I guess that might help, but I wouldn't recommend it, not least because there's no space for air to circulate, and if you forget to take it off again in the summer, you could do some real damage to your battery. Placing your battery under the eaves of your house will certainly help, or you could construct a small canopy. Better still would be to enclose your battery with some kind of wooden housing like this, or even this made from glass and likely internally heated. And despite the Tesla Powerwall having its own heater, I note that you can still buy covers for it if you wanted. Everything helps, I guess. Okay, hopefully all this has been helpful to you if you were worried about the impact colder temperatures would have on your home battery. And thanks again to Greg Stewart for his insight. Please can you like this video and also subscribe to see what I'm releasing very soon. And if you live in the UK and you'd like to support my work, please consider using my referral code if you're planning to move to Octopus Energy, the best energy provider I know of. And finally, you can also financially support my work by signing up to my Patreon. Links for both of these are in the description. Thanks for watching and see you very soon.